Today we're cutting more hay, but this time we're cutting a little bit of a different kind of hay. So the plan is to cut this whole bank up above us here. Um, this is called Eco, eco Hay. Eco. It's a bit of a walk up there, so I'm going to bring a second tank of fuel. Eric's machine, the Monta, has a pretty big tank, so it can go pretty much all day on just one tank. This one, not so much. But uh, he's going to start down below and cut his way up on the steeper stuff. This machine doesn't do as well on the steep terrain, so I'm going to start kind of halfway uh, where it's a little bit flatter and then work my way up from there. There, that field is done. Uh, it didn't take nearly as long as I thought it was going to. And then I think the next field we're gonna do is right over there. It's the uh, field right underneath the forest. We've gotta cut all that today as well. We're at the second field we're cutting today. Um, we already cut a little bit before lunch. Um, and now we're back. David's here with us. He's gonna be cutting also. So we've gotta cut all of this section and then there's a little bit more down below. Um, you can kind of see through the trees right under the forest there that's where we cut this morning you see this like uh, reflective flag right here these are put up the night before we cut because these fields are only cut once a year there's a lot of deer that will bed down in this grass now deer sometimes will leave their fawns sleeping somewhere while they go off and do something else and when we're cutting it can be really hard to see them in the grass so these reflective flags are supposed to help scare off any deer so they're not sleeping in the field and then also there's a local hunting club, I think it's a hunting club at least, that uh, will come by with a thermal drone and search the fields in the morning to see if there are any deer sleeping as well. We've talked about how there isn't that much farmland in Switzerland. All of the farmland there is, is needed. To be a farmer in Switzerland, you have to use your land wisely, using as much of it as you can. But there's a problem here. What about the birds and the bees? These little animals rely on tall grasslands to survive. And when it's time to cut hay in Switzerland, everything is cut. Switzerland is shorn like a sheep. When all of the grass is cut basically at the same time every year, where do all the butterflies and the grasshoppers and the little honeybees go? Coming from the east coast of the United States, this was a little bit different for me. We do have farming, but it's not nearly as densely packed. People are using the land, but there's also a lot of extra land that is just kind of left to sit. In Switzerland, it's quite a bit different. It really is just like a two week period that pff, everything is cut. It's pretty crazy and it's kind of a problem. To help with this problem, Switzerland has what is called biodiverse areas or Ökohoi. Ökohoi? I still can't pronounce it. This ground washed out with uh, the rain this spring, and Eric just pointed out this stone. I don't even know what this is. It's like, is it fossils? It looks fossilized, but I don't know enough about stones. Very interesting. It looks like a dinosaur egg. I don't know. If you know what this is, let me know. Now, I am no expert on all of Switzerland's land regulations. I'm an American and all of these Swiss regulations are a little bit beyond me. It's like, you gotta be a lawyer to know whether you can take your trash out. You can't take your trash out on Sunday, so you take your trash out on Monday. But then it's like, no, 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 you can't take your trash out today. It's a Sunday. And you're like, wait, I, th I thought it was Monday. You're like, well, it is Monday but it's also a Sunday. Really, I, I have no idea, I'm just lost. But anyways, these biodiverse areas are fields that are intended to give a place for insects and other small animals to live, as well as promote the growth of wildflowers and other plants. A certain percentage of a farmer's land has to be biodiverse area, but a farmer can also choose to put more of his land in this category. This puts restrictions on the land, mainly when and how often the grass can be cut but also other things like restrictions on fertilizers and herbicides. There are several different categories of these biodiverse fields, all with slightly different rules. Based on the categories, some fields are allowed to use small amounts of organic fertilizer, some aren't allowed to use any fertilizer at all, and so on. 
but they all generally work the same way. The dates are different depending on the elevation of the field, but here in Einsiedeln, the grass can be cut at the beginning of July. In the lowlands, like around Zurich, it's in the middle of June. In the higher elevations, it's sometime later in July. Because the fields are cut late, it gives a chance for flowers and other plants to grow and produce seeds. It also gives a place for all the little bugs to live. But also because this grass is cut late, it's older. And there's a lot of other plants mixed in there. Plants that animals don't really like to eat. This older grass mixed with other plants makes for a much lower quality hay. Of course, this is a loss for the farmers. If they fertilized and cut these fields just like any other hay field, they would get a lot more better quality hay from these fields. To make up for the loss, farmers that follow all of the regulations are subsidized for this land. So we're at Kuboden now. This is where we did the fence up above um, and I talked about the Alps. Um, there's also a little bit of hay up here that we're gonna cut. This is just normal hay. So right here and then down here, um, below the field, there's a small field as well. Uh, the cows are up here somewhere. They're not in this bottom pasture. They're in this upper pasture, but I don't actually see them at the moment. I'm not sure where they are. Oh, I hear them. They're over there. Yeah, so let's get it done. To get through here, we have to take apart this barbed wire fence and remove one of the stakes. It's kind of one of those annoying things about barbed wire. If the idea is to protect the wildlife and the farmers are being paid for the land, why cut the grass at all? It seems like it'd make more sense to just leave the land uncut and wild so the wildlife is just never bothered at all. There's actually a good reason for this and it's also one of the requirements that these fields are cut at least once a year. The idea here is to protect the wildlife and plants that grow in these meadows. If these meadows aren't maintained and cut, brush will grow up and take over, eventually turning these meadows into forests. Forests that don't support these types of plants and wildlife. So that field down there is now finished. Pretty awesome. And uh, the sun is starting to uh, go down a little bit. <clears throat> so the colors in Switzerland get really nice. In the evenings, oh yeah, evenings, early mornings, colors are so amazing. Cows are back. They're hanging out by the water trough there. Eric's just finished up and I think we're gonna load up and go home. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.